Hi everybody, welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to look at using Google Draw to create mind mapping or semantic mapping or graphic organizers, uh, however you want to call it, in your classroom to help students organize and diagram information in ways that make sense to them and helps them really spatially be able to recognize patterns and connections between various materials that you're teaching in whatever class that may be. The program we're going to use to do this is Google Draw. Uh, there's also a tutorial on Bubble, which is available on Blackboard as well. I like using Google Draw just because it fits with the format of G Suite Education, and more than likely your schools uh, where you're working will have Google for Education. So it's already integrated right into uh, the technology that you'll be using at your place of work. One great element of Google Draw is that you, the teacher, can create them. Also, you can make them shared and make them uh, be editable so your students can go ahead and make them and share them with each other and also just the fact that your students can create their own graphic organizers in Google Draw is really a fantastic element to this program. This is a template just to give you an idea of what uh, items can be done on Google but we're gonna go ahead we're gonna start and we're gonna make a new Google drawing so to do that we just simply go to our drive new more and then we select the Google Drawings option. And from here, we will be able to create and design our own uh, semantic map, however it is that we want. To get started, you want to give your organizer a title. So to get to do that, we're going to go here, we're select, and we're going to select a shape. I'm going to pick a rectangle or a square. Just go ahead and get started and drill that in here. And we'll call this. Uh, Rome. Why not? We'll look at studying ancient Rome. You'll notice your text appears just like normal, like it would in a Google Doc. You can go ahead, you can play around with the formatting, make it any size you want, bold, italicized, whatever it is. You have the exact same options here as you would have in Google Docs. So now that we have a title and a concept for our map, we're going to go ahead and actually start creating the graphic organizer. So the next thing we want to do is we want to insert another shape and you can see the different options that you have here arrows we'll get to that in a second uh, you can see the different call outs equation whatever it is that you want to do I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna put in let's see we'll do a there we go and we have that now what we want to do I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm going to insert another here and we'll make one more copy and I'll drag this over here now what we want to do is we want to establish that there's going to be a connection between these items. So what we want to do is go up here to select line and you can see the different options that are here. I'm going to make an arrow and just very simply click whoop, and drag this to here. Again, I can either copy that or I can go ahead in and make another arrow. I'll start here and I will drag this to my mind map here. And then last but not least, I will put in a third line connecting to here and you can see you can see here now we have our connections that states what we are talking about we can go ahead and we can go title these whatever we would like literature arts and government Now you'll notice I was able to move the box and make it smaller. All you do is just simply select it and move it around if you want to move it or shrink it. That's up to you. Because uh, a lot of times you'll find that you want your students to be able to put, uh, you know, context and notes underneath those bubbles. So you can move, move those around and manipulate them as you see fit. And again, you'll notice you can change the font size, style, whatever it is that you want. If you find it doesn't fit properly, just increase the size of the bubble itself. You can also change the background color. So up here, go to fill color. If I want to make it an orange, I can go ahead and make it an orange. Maybe you want to split these up and have them all be different colors. That is up to you. Uh, that's just something that you can decide when you're making your assignment. Also, if you so desire, here you can make your border. You can change the border colors. You can do whatever it is that you want with it. Customize it as if you would like to do so as well. Now that I have modified the color and shape of my 
bubble, I'm going to go ahead and now I'm going to draw an arrow from here to here. And you can see there's my arrow. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to copy my other two bubbles so that they match this size here. As I mentioned, I changed the bubbles. What you'll notice is if you move it around, you'll notice Google kind of automatically aligns it for you. So if I want it to be in the center, it'll do that. But now notice if I go up and I want to align them so that they're all on an equal plane, just simply move your bubble or text box. And then once you see it line up, you go ahead and let go and it will do that for you. Pretty cool when you think about it. It saves you a lot of time and it makes sure, also makes sure that your stuff looks good and even. Another item I wanted to show you is your ability to add images to your Google Drawing. So we go to insert and you notice there's a lot of different items we can insert here. We'll go over a couple more of these later. Uh, but for right now, I wanna focus on image. Just like in Google Docs, you have different places from where you can grab your image from. You can upload from your computer. Maybe you have something saved in your on your hard drive, whatever that is, or a USB, for instance. You can, your Google Drive, photos by URL, and then by simply taking a camera on your laptop. For the purpose of this, I'm going to search the web. And as you can see, I already did a search for ancient Rome. So we'll go ahead and insert an image from the Colosseum. And you can go ahead and move it around, do whatever it is that you would like with it, make it smaller. An example of this may be instead of art, we change this to architecture. And this can be the bubble, which is the main idea of architecture. And students can then go ahead and insert their information below. Again, just like you would in Google Docs or Google Sheets, you can add a border. You can change the color of the border. You can change the thickness. You can change the type of line. Maybe you want to go to a dashed line, whatever it is. You can see how it comes out here. That's up to you, the formatting. If you don't like that, just hit Control-Z, and that will undo what you did previously. Another aspect I wanted to show you about inserting is insert, and we're going to drop in some word art. So you just simply type in what you would like. I love Rome. Who doesn't? Hopefully you've been there. If you haven't, hopefully you have a chance to do so. Now you're going to notice it's going to pop up and it's going to match the colors with your title. So we're going to move this down here. And we're going to shrink it a little bit so that it fits in with our diagram. Now, again, just like you would on anything else with text, you can go ahead and change the font. So we'll change this to a real fat face. And we're going to change our font color to, let's go purple for Ashland. And we will leave the border as black. And again, you can manipulate this any way you want. I'm going to make it an eight point. and eh, it's a little too fat. Let's go back and make that a four point. There you go. And you'll notice again, your outline. If you put in a dash, it's not going to look very good or dots. So I recommend if you are doing the word art, just leave it as it is uh, with a solid line for an outline. If you don't want one, you just simply select transparent and you won't have any outline whatsoever on your word art. The item I wanted to show you was perhaps maybe you want to change the background uh, of your draw drawing. So to simply right click on top of your Google drawing, but make sure you don't do it on top of any of the items which you have placed on the drawing. Go to background and you'll notice you can change these. Maybe we'll just change this to, let's see here. Trying to find a color that I haven't really used yet, maybe a light red, and voila, there you go. You have a new background color for your Google Drawing, which is really pretty cool. And now, last but not least, we want to look at how to go ahead and share our Google Drawing. So maybe you want uh, students to be able to collaborate with their peers on this and create their own Google Drawing. For instance, maybe you have a chapter and you break it up into sections and each group has a specific section that they will create a Google Drawing for just like you would in Docs or Sheets or Slides. Go to Share. Oh, got to name it. I forgot to do that. Ancient Rome. Make sure you have a name. That's important. And now here your options pop up. So again, remember, if you want people just to look at it and not to be able to edit, you leave it as Can View. If you would like people, your peers or, or students to be able to edit, simply change it to Can Edit and copy the link. Or you can enter the email addresses here. Again, make sure that if you see the pencil, that is a can edit. If you want them just to be able to view it, maybe you want the students to make a copy of a Google drawing that you have created uh, based upon a specific lesson that you're doing, 
you would make it a can view. And then once you share that, the students will receive it. They won't be able to write on it, but they can make a copy under file. I'll show you how to do that here. Go to file, make a copy, and then that will provide a new template of this for your students that they can go ahead and fill in. If you are looking to print this, download, here are the download options. The best one, the one that I would recommend if you're going to print is to use the PDF option. That's the one that's going to look the best when you go ahead and uh, actually print it off. Now another option is you can publish this to the web. So you'll notice you go to file, publish to the web, and what it's actually going to do when you paste in this hyperlink is it will take you to a blank page. Actually, want to move the page and it will download as a PNG. So you just simply select on the file. There we go. And you notice it'll pop up for you as a PNG in the preview on a Mac. So you can just print this, you can save this, you can upload this as an image, whatever you want to do now that you have it saved as a PNG. And there it is. There's your Google Drawings tutorial. Hopefully this helps you. Uh, you know, there are multiple ways in which you can use this. You can also use this in Google Docs. You can insert this directly into a Google Doc. In the Google Doc, when you have it open, you just show, actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to do that. You'll notice I now have a blank Google Doc here. And I'm going to insert the drawing. Just simply go to Insert, Drawing, From Drive, and I will just select Ancient Rome. I want to link to Source. And now here it is in a Google Doc. So say, for instance, this is part of an assignment that you have created. Maybe students are reading something that you've created and you have a graphic organizer which you have created that you want them to take notes on or whatever it is. You can put this right into a Google Doc. Just another little option for you. It makes it a little bit easier and, and, and versatile as well. So this concludes our tutorial on Google Drawings. For this assignment, you can use Google Drawings or Bubble. All right, so hopefully this helps you and good luck.